This is King World News. I'm Eric King, and you're about to hear a tremendously powerful interview with the number one trends forecaster in the world, Gerald Salente, from the Trends Research Journal. Remember to go to our homepage at www.kingworldnews.com for more interviews, where this week we also have an outstanding interview with Bill Fleckenstein of Fleckenstein Capital. Also on the Gold Plus page, we have our exclusive weekly medals wrap with Ted Butler. And make sure to go each day to the KWN Daily Web where we have the day's top videos, articles from across the world, and something to make you laugh. Joining us now is Gerald Salente, founder and director of the Trends Research Institute, author of Trends 2000 and Trend Tracking, and publisher of the Trends Journal. He has been forecasting trends since 1980 and recently called the collapse of 2009. Gerald, last time you were on King World News, we spent quite a bit of time talking about the elite bankers raping the American public. So I just want to jump right in with the latest attempt at their version of public relations, where you have Goldman Sachs and Warren Buffett giving $500 million in loans or whatnot to small businesses. Compared to what was stolen, compared to what was stolen, from the American public, what kind of ridiculous PR move was that? Well, they're desperate. Lloyd Blankfein, the CEO of the Goldman Sachs gang, was quoted as saying that what they're doing is, quote, God's work. God's work. You know, you want to talk about blasphemy. How about that? And then he was also quoted when he, they tried to throw the $500 million little peanuts out there after collecting billions from we, the uh, the people, they said that they, yeah, they had made terrible mistakes. What are these terrible mistakes? Are they criminal mistakes? Oh, no, no. Not when the white shoe boys do it. Only when the rest of us do it, then it's criminal act. But when the white shoe boys and the Goldman Sachs gang the Merrill Lynch mob, the uh, the Bear Stearns gang, the J.P. Morgan Chase mob, when they do it, oh, it's only a mistake, and they get a free ride. So this is, as we said, this is the greatest bank robbery in American history, Eric, but the banks are doing the robbing. They're robbing the people blind, and it's happening every day. One dirty deal after another. It's fraud. It's criminal activity. But what they do is they call it legislation. That's the term that Washington likes to use. Let's continue on with that, Gerald, since you brought up the Goldman Sachs gentleman, Lloyd Blank, and fine talking what about What gentleman? <laughs> I mean, why call him a gentleman? Why you can't? This is, this is the point that I'm making. If the people's names on Wall Street were named Salenti, Caruso, Mondavi, they call it the mafia. But this guy's a gentleman? What gentleman? He's a crook. The Goldman Sachs gangs are crooks. Let's put it in perspective, Eric. Remember what happened under the other the Don, the Don of the Goldman Sachs gang, Henry the Don Paulson, when he was Treasury Secretary under Bush. And of course, you know, he was the former CEO of Goldman Sachs. And what happened? Well, in 2008, when AIG, nobody even knew what an AIG was, when they had to be bailed out to the tune of $180 billion, well, we had to cover Goldman Sachs bad debts bad bets that they made on AIG to the tune of $13 billion. And then they turned the, the venerable investment bank of Goldman Sachs, they always use that term venerable to describe a brokerage firm that's a casino that gambles. They got the status overnight, just like that zippity doo -dah, they became a bank holding company. Oh, yeah, that allowed this casino that gambles to now borrow money via the Federal Reserve at zero practically interest rates and then rewash that money by charging higher interest rates to governments and businesses that borrow and allows them to keep doing their spectacular games. And let's look what's happened already. The three firms, just three of them, Goldman Sachs gang, the uh, J.P. Morgan mob and the Morgan Stanley crooks, they're going to be doling out $30 billion in bonuses. I mean, that's bigger than the GDP of many nations. These aren't gentlemen. 
They're robbing us blind. They're bandits. Well, this is from your Trends Journal, and we'll keep it on the banks and all of these guys for a minute here. In the free market doctrine, there is no provision for government intervention in which losses are socialized, taking taxpayer money to rescue too big to fail companies and gains privatized from awarding executives billions in bonuses, end quote. Lloyd Blankfein went in one week from saying Goldman Sachs, as you said, was doing God's work to apologizing, saying, We participated in things that were clearly wrong and have reason to regret we apologize. Yeah, what's this apologize? What what did they do that's wrong? Criminal activity, maybe. How about that? You know, all these guys get a free ride. Everyone's afraid to call a spade a spade. They could start wars for fake reasons. They could rob you blind, and it's an apology. The rest of us, you know, you run a red light. They got it on camera. And how about having two glasses of wine, and you get a breathalyzer test? You know, they, they handcuff you, throw you up against the car, and put you in jail. But these guys could destroy the lives of how many tens of millions of people whose pensions have been destroyed, their retirement programs unraveled, their futures in jeopardy because they made a mistake? How about let's look into this? But of course, who's going to look into it? The accomplices, the Democrats and the Republicans, who these criminal gangs pay off? Look at the numbers. The numbers don't lie. What is it? About $500 million worth of campaign contributions that they've given to the industry, that the industry's given to the politicians? I love it. Campaign contributions. How about bribes? Can anybody say that word? Or payoffs? There's one for you. It reminds me that you know, they would start to look into this. And as you said, somebody would come back and say, well, yeah, we do have a problem. There's criminal activity and and it's you, boss. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. You're the, you got it. Well said. I want to get your thoughts on this whole situation. And we had the legendary Jim Sinclair on the show last week. And in another interview, he had commented, quote, the degree of immoral sociopathic individuals are more on Wall Street than anywhere else on the planet. Bravo. You can't grow a conscience if you don't have one. I've lost sight in one eye. I tell you that blindness is not seeing dark. It is simply not seeing. That's similar to the condition of a sociopath whose only purpose in life is to make money at any cost and to do any damage and actually to enjoy the fact of doing it. That's what's called ripping faces off, all laughing and filling up their wine glasses, end quote. When you look at Blank Fine's comments, because I'm hearing the same thing from you, is Sinclair correct that Wall Street is filled with sociopaths, Gerald? Well, they're money junkies. I and mean, that's it's junkie is a junkie, whether it's heroin, cocaine, or money. Their, their addiction can never be satisfied. And they'll do anything because they're addicts. They'll rob their mother. They'll kill their brother. They'll steal from friends. They have no loyalty, no bounds or boundaries. They're junkies. They're money junkies, all of them. Why can't we call them what they are? Jim Sinclair is 100% correct. I agree with him totally. By their deeds, you shall know them. Look at these criminal activities. They call it high finance. We call it robbery, fraud, extortion, and the destruction of the United States. This country has gone from the greatest entrepreneurial empire in the world to one where we now have to save the too big to fails. The money junkies need more money. Thirty billion dollars? Who are they kidding? What am I, an imbecile? I just woke up yesterday? You only make this kind of money by doing dirty deals or having the inside deal. I mean, it's not because they're so smart. It's because who they know and who they do it with. Blank Fine is not the only one who had sought apology for playing a pivotal role in creating the crisis. Two weeks ago, John Reed, who had helped in creating Citigroup, the world's largest and financially unwieldy bank, repeatedly apologized for the mergers. Quote, I am sorry, he had told Bloomberg. These are people I love and care about. You can imagine emotionally, it's not easy to see what's happening, quote. Does a sociopath really have those kind of emotions in reality, Gerald? 
clearly a sociopath doesn't. And again, this apology, these mea culpas aren't worth a dime. It's just disgusting. The whole thing is disgusting. And that's why we're saying that the second American revolution has begun. The people know what's going on. It's, it's this fawning media that glosses over these criminal activities to make it seem as though these guys didn't do anything all that bad, and now they're making amends. But the average person who's lost their job or in jeopardy of losing it, the kids that are graduating college with a futureless future, they can't even get a job at Sports Authority. How about the people that have lost their homes or are losing them and, and, and facing foreclosure? 